Before we get into today's episode, if you want a bonus podcast episode per week, that's four extra a month, plus access to my private Instagram where I post never foresee videos, bloopers, uh, deleted scenes. I go live Q&A with my fans and a portion of it goes to charity. Go to TreyKennedy.com slash DLG and become a do less guest. TreyKennedy.com slash DLG. Now on to today's episode. Correct opinions. Woo! Episode 40. Cool. Thanks for coming back, yo. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about it, what's the deal with Corona. Is it contagious? Is it not contagious? Do we all want to die? We're we not going to die. Drive me nuts. Okay. Um, we got uh, some, a good segment of Triggered brought to you by you. I should have sent in some trigger segments. We got some great passionate responses. Um, I, I posted a nice Karen's video. I recap that and much more. Welcome back to Correct Opinions, episode 40, Roll Music, Correct Opinions, Correct Opinions, it's cold brew season, I'm fired up, One of, ooh, it's officially hot, hot, like a Little Caesars pizza, and your boy's happy about it, okay, I'm a big coffee guy. I love when I can make the jump to cold brew, where I wake up, and it's, I'm sweating, and I want to... I want caffeine and I want it cold and cold brew gives you more caffeine. And I'm talking like I'm, I I had a whole big cold brew and it's amazing. Woo. Um, correct opinion is episode 40. Who would have thought we made it this far? Not me, (laughs) not me. I posted a Karen's video. Karen's be like went viral on Twitter. Shout out Twitter. Um, Karen's be like, I, Young man, what are you, are you listening to that podcast again? I don't like, oh, ooh, I just thought of this. <laughs> okay, so you guys know, um, sometimes I'll be like, hey, y'all, and you guys do this a lot, and I appreciate it. Give us like a good review on Apple Podcasts. We have over 4,000 five-star reviews. I want to say thank you. That's very helpful um, in the charts and all that. And a lot of you guys take the time to even write out, like um, like recently someone said, I, love, I absolutely love this podcast. It's the only one I enjoy listening to. I love this podcast so much. It makes me laugh so hard. Thank you. But every now and then you get the one star. People just let you know you suck. And I got a particular Karen one star a while back and I just remembered it. So I'm going to find it right now. I made the Karen's be like video. People loved it. It's just you. Hey, but I I loved all the comments. I made a joke about how uh, the Karen's will be like, you didn't put your shopping cart back. Hey, you're not leaving until you put that cart back. Are you kidding? And uh, I, I wore a wig, a Kate and, uh, John and Kate plus eight wig. I did not know this at the time. I just went to Amazon. I literally Amazoned white white woman wig, white mom wig or something like that. And it just came up with that. And in hindsight, it was for sure an exact replica of Kate Gosselin. The wonderful show we watched growing up. If you don't know, it was a sweet little family. They had eight children. They weren't eight. They weren't octuplets. I don't I don't think that's possible. No, they it was not it was either eight kids or one kid with eight arms. But they were a nice, sweet family, and I remember watching it with my mom. She's like, Oh, I love this show. It's just a sweet, hopeful family. And it's like, oh, they he was like having an affair and then a divorce and it's a disaster. And they're like addicted to drugs or something. I don't know. Actually don't quote me on that. I can't really remember. But it was things went bad. Okay, let me see if I can find this review. I have the great problem of you guys giving me so much great five-star reviews. It's tough to find. Thank you. Um, oh, where is it? Where is it? The, the funniest part of uh, the Karen's video. My mother's actual name is Karen. And she watches everything, listens to everything. She's listening to this right now. So when I made the video, I was going to you know, post it like the next day. So I had to text her like, Mom, because... Uh, you know, the people my mom's age, they're probably not understanding. The, it's like, you know, Karen's a meme. What is even a meme? I'm like, oh, let me explain. But I was like, mom, it has nothing to do with your actual name. You, you're Karen, but you're not a Karen. Okay. She was like, okay, I guess I won't take offense to it. And I just wonder, she probably had so many friends be like, or, oh, I guess, Katie, my wife's mom, my mother-in-law, I guess, texted her like, man, that was... Is did Trey get into some kind of argument with his mom? That was pretty brutal. <laughs> um, 
Oh, here it is. One star review. One star. The title of the one star review is Grow Up. Okay. At the start, this was kind of funny, but I'm starting to think this guy hasn't ever met anyone he's ever liked. I mean, how mad is this guy? He, out here, he's supposed to, he claims to be like a good, nice guy, but he is just hateful. Whether he likes it or not, he is an example, and he is only spreading hatred and negativity. Unsubscribe. Karen's be like. Thank you, Karen, for coming. There's the door. Uh, that's what I love about that. Like, do you want to tune in to me being like, I met another person I liked today? No! You want me to be like, hey, you want me to? It's funny. The whole podcast is making fun of things that everyone wants to make fun of. And then you're, imagine being so unaware that you're like, this guy, he's just mean. And now you're the thing we're all making fun of. <laughs> That's Karen's in a nutshell. Karen's wouldn't be in a nutshell because their kids are allergic to them. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't like the term in a nutshell because Timmy has a, also, yeah, I made a little peanut allergy joke. Guys, I, I know there's very real peanut allergies. I'm not making fun of that, but we, but you know, but the Karens are the ones who are faking their kids' peanut allergy. Their kid, like, sneeze once eating a cashew and they're like, <gasps> put up your honey roasted almonds. Jameson's arrived. Okay. Karen's be like, it was great. I, uh, dude, did you see there was an th article like a week ago that said, uh, World Health Organization announces that uh, asymptomatic people basically can't or like very rarely will spread the disease. And I was like, what? What? And then like eight hours later, it's like um, the World Health Organization changes their mind. Like, Wait, what? And then it's like now they've it's the CDC like very quietly was like, hey, by the way, the, the virus like it's hard for it to spread on surfaces. So I feel like people should be announcing this more. Three months ago, it was like, yeah, you guys better bunker down. People were like, you know how many people were getting like, listen, my brother's cousin's um, dog's aunt works at the Pentagon. And they said, you better find a bunker now because the tanks are rolling in. And there was, we got, we got frozen food for like, like we were, like we were getting cast on Survivor or something. That was going right. They're like, you know how the flu spreads? You know how everyone has the flu? It stays on a surface for like 15 minutes. But Corona? Three days. If you as much as touch a wall, anyone who goes near that wall for weeks will die. It was like, I mean, what are we supposed to do? And then articles are coming out like they've discovered Corona can last up to 17 days on surfaces on a cruise ship. Yeah, dude, dude, this, keep this really on the DL, but my dad's, um, my dad's, uh, grandpa's ghost, um, son works. He's the janitor at the white house and they're going to, they're going to lock all our doors with Bill Gates is going to lock our doors. You're just like, what is going on? And they're like, by the way, asymptomatic people can't really spread it and it doesn't really spread on surfaces. Thanks. Bye. Never mind. J Wait, we changed our minds. Um, maybe they can. It's like, I don't... Quit. They're like, quit, quit wearing your masks. Nurse need masks. Okay? Are you an idiot? Doesn't even help. And it's like, if you don't wear masks now, you're a jerk. Like, this is so... Restaurants can open, but you, we encourage wearing masks. Okay, let me just eat through my mask. They're just saying stuff. I don't even know what's going on. I saw a guy riding a bike with a mask on. I wanted to just, I wanted to just kind of, you know, uh, on the movie, on the show, like cops or something where they kind of like tail whip a guy's car to get him out. It's kind of one of like his back tire. You got a mask on, just kind of bump him a little. <sighs> no one knows what's happening. I don't. And now the cases are supposedly... That's another thing that's misleading, too. They're like, most cases announced in Texas since 
the break of this, but it's like, okay, you're testing 80 times as many people or whatever. And yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna like increase a little bit when we're not in our houses. We just got to hope it doesn't increase, I guess a lot, a lot because I want to come to tour and see you guys. I can't wait till we, till we do the Ari Freel tour. And I just look at all y'all in the crowd and you have masks on It's something out of a horror film. All your muffled laughter behind your masks. Might have to sell some do less God bless masks if it comes to it. It's like becoming a fashion piece. The mask is Gucci. It's $400. It doesn't even work, <laughs> but it looks cool. It's a will do. Oh, no one knows what's happening. The other morning I woke up. Early morning. Katie, my wife. She was last night in last night in the middle of the night, you kicked me really hard. I was like, oh my gosh, well, I have no recollection of that. That's weird. I did that in my sleep. She just pauses. That's not okay. I was asleep. You need to do better. Granted, it was like 6.30 in the morning, but I'm like, what, what am I supposed to do? It's funny when you, you get married, you start to learn. Not only I'm getting coached up how, how to say the right thing, but sometimes I say the right thing, but not the right way. You're like... She's like, could you do that for me? I go, okay. She goes, wait, what? She's like, you need to be a little nicer, a little less aggressive. I'm like, what, do I, what was I supposed to say? You're like, no, it's, it's not what you said. It's how you said it. Okay. Oh, I just went, okay. She's like, but it was aggressive. So how am I supposed to say? Okay. The sun is shining and the birds are singing. I'll do the dishes with a bluebird on my shoulder. Zippity doo da. Okay, that's better. Is that was that that hard? <laughs> it's what I love. Every relationship. All oh, guys know what I'm talking about. It's not. It's not always what you say. It's how you say it. That was. That was. It came across a little aggressive. Okay. Would you Would you take out the trash? Yeah. Okay. That's the way you said it. Why, yes, yes, the clouds are in the sky, and my wife is beautiful. I'll take out the trash and the recycling bin, and return for a beautiful hug and a bluebird on my shoulder. That's, was that that hard? That's, was that that hard? It's not always just what, it's how you say it. We all know this. We know this. I, uh... <laughs> what? Okay, we... This... This garage is a mess. We need to clean this up. Okay. All right, let's do it. It's the way you said it. All right! Let's clean out the garage. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're gonna organize the shuffles and the extra mulch. Woo! We're gonna hang up some hooks. We're gonna organize our old books. We're gonna clean out the garage. Clean out the garage. Clean out the garage with my wife. Was that, was that that hard? Thank you. Okay. Now I know. You need you kicked me in your sleep, and you need to do better. Just to the classic. I dreamed that you cheated on me. So she doesn't do that. I'm making her sound crazy. She's not crazy. I'm just very difficult to be around that much, I'm a, I'd imagine. Um, let's get to uh, another segment of Triggered. We all have Triggered. Uh, it's very therapeutic for us all. And... Uh, last episode, I asked y'all to send in some voice memos via the email at, or uh, Trey, uh, I can't talk, uh, uh, correct opinions at TreyKinder.com or my uh, the correct opinions Instagram. Go follow that at correct.opinions. Y'all send in some very passionate submissions that we need to just, let's just go through together and uh, get through this together. Please enjoy. <laughs> Catherine sent in. Uh, this is very helpful. I'm going to, the, you know, you guys know we keep it PG here. So we got youngins here. 
shout out you young and so uh catherine bless her heart was so passionate she she got so she got a little colorful so just bear i'm gonna, I'm gonna not show it i'm just you'll see okay here we go something that really triggers me is when you go to a restaurant and you ask for ketchup and the ketchup that they bring, oh, profanity. Ketchup, it's it's not ketchup, ketchup. it's house meat they're like oh yeah we have, we have our own in-house oh, ketchup yes man uh, i'm sorry ma'am i don't want your yeah it's horrible it's horrible It gets my blood boiling, and mm -hmm. I know the restaurants to avoid now in my area in St. Louis. So uh, I will not go yep. to the places if I know they have in-house ketchup. Respect. And for the future places that I come across that have in-house ketchup that they made themselves, I hate you. Oh, wow. That's what triggers me. <laughs> See, Catherine's very passionate, and we have to – all I can do is respect that. And I completely agree. Let, let's talk. Let's let's talk about ketchup. Because it's... Because I... She said this and I was like, oh my gosh. So, okay, first of all. When you go to these restaurants, you know, these restaurants are going to do what she's talking about. Are these kind of gastropubs. They try to be fancy and they don't want to like put out the ketchup, the, the bottle on the table. So what? You order fries and you get the meal. And if I have to do this... If we if I, if I order a burger and fries and you hand it set it down and I have to go could you please bring me ketchup not coming back who I ordered fries I have to ask for the ketchup what kind of psychopath are you assuming people are eating fries without ketchup so you you assume you're just serving food to a a restaurant full of full blown psychopaths who's eating fries without ketchup most, I mean, everybody should be eating fries with the ketchup. So then I got to go, could I get some ketchup? Which blows my mind. And what happens in a lot of these places? What happens? They return with just a little cup of ketchup, just a little bitty cup. And they set it down. And I immediately, without blinking, I go, could I get another? Because that's not a, I'm sure that you could see my plate. I didn't order four and a half French fries. So I need more than your little metal thimble of ketchup bring three to four more what oh they that's so annoying they just bring the little cup i'm gonna need i'm gonna need three more of those so yeah i mean you just you just if you had just had ketchup initially you would have saved two trips back to the kitchen trip one was me going i'm gonna need some ketchup trip two's going i'm clearly gonna need more ketchup than that and here we go trip three when, when I realize what you've set down, like Catherine's so passionately upset about, and for good for good reason, you set down what looks like a darn near little Dixie cup of marinara. The bland, bland, mushy, house-made whatever. I have to go, excuse me, what? I, th I thought I asked for ketchup. That's our, that's our uh, homemade in-house ketchup. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I should have specified. I didn't want you to give me minced red crayon with my ketchup, with my fries. I wanted the real thing. Catch you ketchup and give me some actual ketchup. That's our house made. Yeah. That real Roma tomatoes we crush um, daily in house. And then I don't hey, clearly I want ketchup. I'm, I couldn't tell you one ingredient. In the the real good Heinz fifty seven stuff, maybe tomatoes. There might not be any tomatoes in that, but it's ketchup. It's the ketchup we all know and love. Heinz, you know what fifty seven stands for? Heinz nineteen fifty seven. They let me fact check this because I do like to just make stuff up. Heinz fifty seven. You know what it stands for? Oh, it stands for fifty seven varieties. Okay, but hold on. Heinz fifty seven founded. When did this start? 1892! Eighteen ninety-two. So I'm gonna go with the ketchup company that's been making ketchup since Christopher Columbus came over here. Okay, that's someone like that. <laughs> I 
a long time. How how old your chef? How long's your chef been making in-house ketchup? I don't know. How old how old's the chef? 34? Oh, so he's not 119? Get me the get move get your Heinz moving back to the kitchen and give me a cornucopia of ketchup of the good sugary smoothie ketchup. Thank you, Catherine. That felt better. I felt that, man. All right, next up, Olivia. The worst thing in the whole world is when, like, everyone is quarantining, like, doing what they're supposed to do, Mm -hmm. and then you see, like, Marianne posting on Instagram, like, hanging with the girlies, and then someone comments, like, we're not really good at this six feet apart thing. Like, no, you're not. Get back inside. Mm -hmm. Dear Lord. Oh. Yes. Oh, that does. It's like, I, you know, we were talking about this. No one knows the rules or anything. But if if you're somebody who's like going around, hanging out, having parties, don't brag about it. Uh, here I am with all my nine girls, boozy brunch, totally fanning at this distancing, distancing thing. Yeah. No one likes you. Go. I hope you enjoy your your avocado toast. Because, because I'm about to have a cow dough. That's how angry you make me. Enjoy your avocado toast because all of us are having a cow dough because you're taking us off. Not too good at this six feet apart thing. <laughs> Party time. I'm at the lake. I'm at the pool with all these people. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Uh, cases spike at a local Local Mimosas Hotspot. It's the local hotspot down by the Brunch District in Nashville. Uh, Mary Ann's can't get enough of our half-off salmon, salmon Benedicts. Hotspot now created. Stay inside, Mary Ann. Thank you, Olivia, for that. Um, I remember I, I had a buddy... You know, right now people are kind of, it's confusing, but like a month or two ago, everyone was like, yeah, the world's ending. No one's leaving their house. And I saw people post online like, guys, I tried. I was bored for three, I was alone for three weeks. Like, give me credit. It's time to party. And they'd have like, their show an Instagram story of them with hanging out with like 15 people. It's like, what? what? I get so mad because I'm like, yeah, I haven't seen, only seen three people for two months. You get to have a party? No. You, if, if I am sitting at home eating another frozen Tony's, you don't get to go have a, a boozy buddy brunch. No. Thank you, Olivia. That felt better. We need to get through this together. Rachel, what does she have to say? I am so triggered by moms holding up the line at Starbucks to get their four-year-old a Frappuccino. (laughs) Look, Karen, I'm on my lunch break. I'm in a hurry. I don't feel like waiting for little Braxton Hickston, the third, (laughs) to get his non-fat, low-sugar Java chip Frappuccino with extra whip. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, Man. You know what I grew up on? I didn't. We, you know what I grew up on? The nice, I didn't go to a restaurant that required a reservation until I was 23. And you got four year old, like she said, Brax, Braxton Hickston. You got, you got little Miss McKennedy getting a, she has her own Starbucks order and she's 38 months. What? You got, you, you really got white people out here breastfeeding their kids while they're giving them their daily Starbucks order. They're doing both. That is, I be, I guarantee you that's happening somewhere. We really got people doing that. I didn't, I didn't have a soda until I was like 11. And even then it's like, you get one a week. We ain't that water at the faucet darn near free. <sighs> I remember I was trained. I was trained growing up water bottles. Psh, you better grab a cup and turn the faucet on. We didn't have under that. Oh, you want bottled Gatorade? Nah. 
we bought that Sam's Club bucket of powdered stuff that you just run some water through. You whip that up. I don't want to. I have to like pour it out and like stir it. And it, all right. Guess that's your up to you. Well, while little Calliope has a has a frappe with two pumps of this and a pump of that. Hold the ice. Easy ice. Kidding me. Yeah, I, I just go easy on that ice. Hey, I, I, that ice maker doesn't pump out ice like that fast. Two cubes per glass. You really got kids out here. <laughs> yeah, he's 41 months. We just, we went, he went right from, right from breast milk. He went right from breastfeeding to his daily starves. He went right from bosom to bougie. Meet, meet Blaze. He's a good young man. He's got a lot of energy. Well, partly because of this, his double shot of Restretto shots. Thank you, Rachel. I feel better. I mean, are we feeling better? This episode is brought to you by Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile, that's right. Um, guys. If you haven't heard of Mint Mobile, you need to. They have a new approach to wireless, and it is a thing of the future. It is as low as $15 a month, and it works great. You just activate it through the app. It's amazing. I have, uh, they, they gave me a year uh, data plan. So I have my own number on Mint Mobile, and it, I'm like, okay, let's try this out. It works flawlessly. Why, why would anyone pay for anything else? If you're still using one of the big wireless providers... Have you asked yourself what you're paying for between expensive retail stores, inflated prices, and hidden fees you're being taken advantage of? Because they know you'll play. You know, we've heard of like the big ones. You're just like, yeah, I should do that. Mint Mobile's changing that. They provide the same premium network coverage you're used to, and I can attest to it, but at a fraction of the cost because everything is online. Mint Mobile saves on retail locations and overhead that passes of savings to you. Uh, Mint, Mo Mint Mobile makes it easy to cut your wireless bill down to just 15 bucks a month. Every plan comes with unlimited nationwide talk and text. With Mint Mobile, stop paying for unlimited data you'll never use. Choose between plans with 3, 8, or 12 gigabytes of 4G LTE data. Come on now. So to get your new wireless plan for just $15 a month, I mean, I, I'm serious, it works. Get the, plan shipped, get the plan shipped to your front door for free. Go to mintmobile.com slash tray. That's mintmobile.com slash tray. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month. Mintmobile.com slash tray. Uh, this is from uh, Jeff. Jeff sent this in. We appreciate it. Send it. Um, I am triggered when I have friends who say, hey, do you want to come over for dinner at 6? And I say, mm -hmm. sure, we'll be there at 6. Sounds fun. And I get there at 6, and they start cooking dinner. No. Jeff, don't you tell me that. You said dinner at 6, and it's 6 o'clock, and dinner isn't started yet. Call the Uber, Jeff. Leave. I didn't ask for dinner at six thirty or seven. I said dinner at six. Yep. Uh, okay, let's talk punctuality. Cause ooh, does that get my blood boiling? Does that get? I imagine being Jeff. It's six o'clock dinner. We show up and they're just starting it. So my blood's boiling, but the pot of water isn't yet. You said we're having linguine. Why is my blood boiling and not the pot of water? I'm going to sit here and watch you make it. What kind of this? This is in a restaurant restaurant. I show up. I enjoy the atmosphere and you cook it for me. I let you know what you want. We do, I'm showing up for dinner. I am uh, supposed to sit six feet apart. This is in a restaurant. Have it. Man, when I, I know so many people aren't on board with this, but it fires me up more than anything. When you're, when people aren't on time, you say, yeah, we're going to do uh get together, be here at seven. Okay. I like what, I like how like I'm always on time and people are like, huh. they almost like make fun of you. Huh. Of course he's here. He's here right on time. Cause I'm not a liar. I said, I'll be there at seven. I'll be there at seven. What? Uh, I don't know. The people are like, be there at seven. Oh, just, yeah. It doesn't matter if you show up later. I don't get that. If we're having, if we're having a, let's say we're having a dinner party. Say, hey, man, we'd love to have you for, over for dinner. Uh, we're doing like a dinner party. Do you mind bringing over 12? Uh, do you mind being, we're going to have a big dinner party. 
you mind bringing over 24 cups? Sure. And I show up with 16 cups. And you go, oh, oh, I'm, did I tell you 16? I bet we need 24. We're gonna have 24 people here. We need 24 cups. I'm like, yeah, I just kind of, I don't know. Nobody, you're just kind of busy and, you know, life. And that's what I got. You'd be like, what? who is this guy? But if I'm like seven and I show up at 720, people are like, that's fine. No. I used to host, uh, I used to host people at my house. I still do, but I used to be more aggressive about it where, um, I remember the first time we're trying to do this kind of like, uh, you know, weekly, like let's get together and hang thing. I remember the first time I did it, I was like, come over at uh, 630. We'll have some food and drink for you. And so me and my, my buddy, my roommate, we're at, we're getting stuff ready. We're, you know, we're going out of our way at six o'clock. We're getting ready. 630 arrives. Okay, we're ready. People don't show up till seven. We said, hey, this isn't going to work moving forward. So we, the next time, 631 hit, locked the front door. Oh, how embarrassing is it? Because most of the time you just walk right in. You're kind of like, we'll just kind of sneak in and we'll be obvious we're late. We all begin hanging out and you have to go, you have to, you have to freaking knock. And I really, I make you knock two or three times. I, you know, I hear it the first time. But I act like I don't because we're so busy hanging out. And you have to really, you have to even maybe shoot me a text. Hey, I'm at the door. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. We've just, we've already been hanging out for 10 minutes. Have an email. Come over for dinner, man. Seven o'clock. Show up and you're just like walking in with the groceries from Trader Joe's. Yep, here it is. Dinner. Be ready in an hour and a half. Oh my gosh. This reminds me of one time. When my, so this is a fun story. My wife, Katie, she, um, she was moving to the sit down in to like be together, right? As some relationships do, you do a little long distance, you move together. So she needed a job. I'd run into this lady. Um, I, I I met with a bunch of different people, but this one particular dinner, I went with these people because maybe I could, uh, maybe they could help Katie get a job. And it was one of those like two and a half hour dinners. You ever done those dinner parties? But they're like, yeah, you show up, like, dinner will be ready in an hour and a half. You're like, well, you start doing the math. Well, we have to sit down. We have to eat it. We have to wrap up. We have to chat. So I, I signed up for a maybe an hour and a half dinner, not a three-hour one, okay? This, I'd, I don't want to be here for three hours unless we're at Voga to Chow, getting unlimited lamb shanks. Otherwise, get me out of here. I don't want to eat your, I don't want to wait two hours for your okay bland linguine. Thanks for sharing, Jeff. Oh, guys. Hope this helps. Uh, let's see. We have... Oh, Rebecca. Is that snoring? What? This is my husband. <laughs> Please send help. Ugh. I love him so much, but at the same time, I just want to freaking murder him. Quarantine is the worst. <laughs> oh, man. This is going to be bad. <laughs> oh, she sent that at 10 p.m. Rebecca's husband. Come on, my guy. That is just hilarious. I don't even know. I just wanted to share that one. <laughs> just record the guy snoring. I have been told I snore. Now what's annoying? When people snore, and I, I say it's annoying, I've done it. So I know it's annoying when people snore and then they're like, no, I don't. That's such a classic. My mom's like, he snores so bad. I don't either. You're, we're asleep. Not only do I snore in my sleep, I guess I kick the heck out of my wife in my sleep. So there's bigger problems, Rebecca. You'll be fine. Uh, I just want to share that. Okay. We, we got, um, what else we got here? This is from Jess. Hello. Um, heck yes. British. So a lot triggers me. Um, but up there, <laughs> up there, people who speak in baby voice, I think people who use baby voice to try and sound cute mm. makes me question whether or not life's worth living. <laughs> Sorry, just a quick other one. Oh yeah. When Double people hatter. describe themselves and their friends as weird and quirky, um, Nine times out of ten are actually very vanilla people. Agreed. Thank you, Jess. Um, first of all, British listener, shout out Britain. Um, we all wish we could talk like you guys. 
rather quite boring, um, vanilla, so peaceful, baby voice. Okay, I gotta, I gotta come clean. I gotta come clean. You guys know, you guys know me, okay? You know that I'm here making fun of everyone, but I look in the mirror too, okay? I gotta, fi I gotta figure things out too. I dated a girl a long time ago. We used baby voices a lot. Dang it. We did, dude. Don't you... We cringe and look back at so many stuff we did. Why did... You're my little baby. Who's my little baby? Yo, people... I know people still do that refuse. I, I do not do this. Too. I fixed that, okay? I still looked in the mirror. I fixed it. Baby voices. Horrible. And the... I know so many of you couples do it behind the closed doors. It's embarrassing. Don't ever let anyone know. Okay. But some, you ever been around those couples? They do it in front of you. Those couples, I don't think they know. We all know a couple. I know in a friend group, we all talk about, we, we all know a couple. They're, they're in front of you and they're like, just giving each other little, little like smooches just randomly. It's like a, it's like, it's the ones that are so abrupt and out of nowhere. It's like, it did. You know, he gives her a kiss. Like, did did she consent to that? I feel like you just planted one on her. If I, if she, I don't, I don't think he was even ready for that. I mean, I, I certainly wasn't. He was like, <laughs> we're in the middle of a conversation. Can you stop caressing him? Hey, man, we're in the middle of dinner. I'm trying to get some decent ketchup. I'm trying to catch up with you, <laughs> and you're, you're just scratching her, scratching her shoulder. Stop. Okay? If you want to get handsy, you and me can get handsy, all right? We can take this outside. Stop stop doing that. I'm losing my appetite. There we go. Talking to each other like they talk to a dog. Who's a good girl? Can't do it. Uh, let's see what we got. We got time for another Josie. Okay. Let's see what Josie has to say. I'm so triggered by people who are still using cash. Mm -hmm. Like you obviously don't work in hospitality because you are the reason why your orders are taking so long because I have to go wash my hands to like the full extent. Like you have to stand there and wash your hands for like 30 seconds between every single car. And yep. Like, yep. Okay. Cash. Thank you. Number one. Uh, I think that was. Australia. Yep, Australia. Correct opinions is international. That's actually really cool. Um, Australia. Heinz 57 has been in circulation since 1892. That's my Australian accent. Thanks. Um, cash. People. Yeah, we can't be doing cash. What's more shocking to me is there's if that the fact that there's any anything out there ever in the world where they're like cash only. That there's, I, I would, there's certain restaurants where they do that to save 1.3%, whatever credit cards are. And I'm, I'm just like, I'll never come back here. Like cash only. That's the most annoying thing. You're like, you eat this fire food and you're like, man, this place is cool. Yeah. This is like, a, and then you go to the checkout and like cash only. It's like, well, I don't have cash because it's 2020. So I don't have cash. Why? Or uh, I mean, I think the only though the only thing I think of are those types of restaurants, and then like uh, maybe covers at certain bars, cash man. What? Come on, why? It's just cat, yeah. And then people, I I uh, I'm really I've had people, you know, maybe my I've had a few uncles or something. I don't know. People in the older generation are like, it's important to always have cash. You just never know. No, that's not. Who, there's no way, there's no way we have cash that much longer, right? Everyone's just like touching their phones to things and their car, like cash has got to be going away, right? Which is kind of crazy. To th I'm just now thinking about that. Probably will. Because it just already goes going away. No one I know ever has cash. If if we, if uh, if one of those restaurants survives all this, not all this craziness, this nonsense, and they're like, hey, we do cash only. I mean, anyone I go with, like, well, I guess, can you let us in the back? I guess we're doing dishes because we don't have any cash because we are psychopaths. <sighs> Thanks for sharing, Australian. 
Much love to the Down Under. Uh, thank you guys for sending those in. That was amazing. I think another fun segment I want to do, if you're listening, another fun segment I want to do. A few episodes ago, I did a, like a dramatic reading of a post someone made for their birthday. Send me any of those dramatic posts and I'll do a dramatic reading of them. Those are so fun. Okay? Correct opinions at TreyKinder.com or DM the um, Correct Opinions Instagram at Correct.Opinions. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, go get your Do Less, God Bless merch, shop.treykennedy.com. We got other fun stuff coming. And uh, yeah, also, if you want a bonus podcast episode per week, right, we're just talking about more goofy stuff with my man Jake or what I'm working on next, go to treykennedy.com slash DLG and you get access to a bonus podcast and a bunch of other fun content and a portion goes to charity. Uh, I appreciate you guys listening. It really means a lot. Uh, episode 40 feels great. We're moving right along in the 40s, baby. I know I got a lot. I got some 40s people listening. How does it feel to hit 40? I know now. I don't know. Is it, is it the same thing? Yes, it is. Uh, appreciate the love, y'all. Have a good week. Do less. God bless. See you next time. See you next Wednesday. Correct opinions out. Peace. Correct opinions.